please so okay i welcome everybody on the online training session of new normal hospitality this is being jointly organized by ethwa which is the largest body of tourism stakeholders in eastern india and by india tourism which is a part of ministry of tourism government of india we are thankful to dr sagnik choudhury for uh, making this session possible today he is the regional director of tourism we are also joined here by mr shayok nandi who is the information officer of india tourism uh, i would request dr uh, i would request our general secretary of ethwa mr sandeepan ghosh to address the house and uh, uh, explain you why we are organizing this session and what is the rationale behind it mr ghosh thank you sudha uh, and uh, welcome you all to this very unique and in informative session that we are organizing uh, this has been organized by the india tourism kolkata office uh, Ministry of Tourism, Government of India, and uh, in association with Ethua, uh, we are very, very privileged to have amongst us Dr. Amshuman Chatterjee, who is a very senior hospitality consultant, and he is going to take the session uh, today. He is going to conduct the session today. The rationale behind, you know, uh, hosting such a program was uh, thought way back in the month of May when we communicated with uh, the of India Tourism Office in Kolkata. We felt that. Now, since we are locked down and we all, you know, uh, indoors and we are not doing much activity, we thought that there should there was a need for an online certification program, which we felt would, you know, educate us and also uh, would carry forward some activity during this lockdown. That was the rationale. We have had uh, one session already on tour operators that we conducted on the 10th of August. We are doing four such, four such sessions today. We are doing a session on for hoteliers and. It's my absolute privilege to welcome all the stakeholders. I already see quite a few of you have joined. I'm sure a lot will still join this program, and uh, we look forward to having all of you. And we all hope that you have an enjoyable session. We have two more sessions lined up for next Monday, that is on 24th. We have a very interesting session on the homestays. As you know, you know homestay is the, uh, the the new concept in tourism now, and not very new at all at the moment. But it's been something that. Uh, in the new normal i think that's going to be something that people will you know choose a lot so that's an interesting session that's coming up next monday on 24th so people who are here you can spread the word the interested people can join and they can be benefited and of course we'll have a last session on transporters on the 31st of august so that's about the schedule uh, i would hand it over to mr bothra once more i wish you all uh, i know a very good session and uh, i would also like to take this opportunity to thank uh, uh, mr shah choudhury is the regional director india tourism kolkata it's his brain child and of course mr shayak nandi who is the tourist information officer at india tourism kolkata without their support and without their uh, constant endeavor i don't think this sessions would be possible so thank you gentlemen thank you so much and i of course would be very very grateful to dr anshuman chatterji for taking time for us once more and uh, we hope we have a good session it's back to you mr bothra uh, before handing the floor to dr chatterjee i'll briefly introduce him to the house he's been a doyen of uh, hospitality education for uh, 21 years he has been teaching at iihm uh, kolkata he has also worked as corporate head for a large multinational company for 11 years in total he brings Uh, about 37 years of experience uh, in hospitality industry hundreds of his students are already working in higher positions in various sectors of tourism and hospitality industry uh, he is uh, is a uh, known leader in the industry and uh, i would be uh, requesting dr chatter to take over and uh, conduct the session thank you uh, mr bothra thank you mr ghosh good evening everybody um as very correctly uh, mentioned by both mr bothra and mr ghosh this is a fantastic initiative by our very own india tourism the eastern uh, region direct the eastern region and uh, you know i have been involved uh, with tourism for the last 37 years let me uh, place on record here i have not seen a government department in the ministry of tourism so active in fact proactive and uh, you know with various activities but at this time when our industry has taken the biggest hit 
in its history, uh, their activities, the way they have uh, uh, tried to bring people together and uh, uh, you know, boost the morale of the people, all of us who have suffered, uh, it's really commendable. My special thanks uh, go to Agnik Chaudhary and Mr. Shaif Nundi for doing a fantastic job. Also, your association, Etwa, I can see that it has been organizing similar webinars, uh, a series of uh, webinars, which uh, actually uh, not only helps us in understanding what we need to do at this hour, but also how we need to think, so, which is uh, equally important. So coming to this uh, pandemic, as I said, that our industry has... Uh, you know, it's probably the biggest uh, sufferer uh, because of this uh, pandemic. Um, I was looking at statistics, you know, let's say 2019. I was looking at uh, total employment. Um, um, uh, I think Mr. Weiba, uh, Mr. Weiba, kindly switch, uh, mute your video and audio because uh, otherwise it's uh, coming on the screen. Uh, so, uh, thank you. Uh, so, so in 2019, total employment was about uh, 43 million in our industry, in the tourism industry, tourism and hospitality, which is about 8% of the manpower directly uh, absorbed in our industry. I'm not even talking about secondary or tertiary industries those are dependent on our industry. Now, there have been job losses also. There have been salary cuts, we all know. But we have to come out of it. We also need to know that that, that lockdown period, which we have been you know, the, all over the world, the world went into a lockdown uh, for the last five months or so. And but we, have got, we are coming out of it now. We are not in a lockdown phase anymore. We are, in fact, in, the, uh, in an unlockdown phase. Slowly, the sectors are being opened up. Our sector is taking a little longer because probably it is uh, people-dependent, people-oriented. It, it involves the presence of people. So such reasons probably... Uh, you know, why uh, are why, uh, you know, our industry is opening up a little slowly compared to certain other industries. But it is opening up. That is the, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the brightest. <coughs> so, uh, uh, Mr. Weber, again, uh, I think uh, so you are coming on the screen and it is a little distracting while talking. If you could kindly mute your video. Uh, there, there are buttons for video and audio. If you could mute uh, both, it would be extreme. So, um, the topic, like as we are, we. for all of us. Now, normal, let us, we have to take a standard, uh, uh, you know, some sort of a, of, a, of a yardstick. Let us take 2019, or maybe, you know, the first one or two months of 2020 also, as the normal, because we saw a lot of tourism activities uh, during 2019. I have some data, I'm sure being in the industry, most of you do also. Um, I can see that in 2019, 10.5 million foreign tourists visited India, absolutely for the purpose of tourism. Which, you know, none of them we are going to see or meet in 2020 or maybe even the early parts of 2021. So this normal to come back at some point of time is going to, uh, again, take some time. Now, how are we then going to going through this uh, unlockdown process and 
uh, where do we stand in terms of the normal that we, are, we all are so used to. We had a bustling industry, but now while coming back, as I can see from my experience, as it is going to happen slowly, we are probably going to have um, some multiple phases of this, uh, you know, this unlock down and the resultant uh, beginning of the uh, re restart of the business. There would be a new normal in the shortest term, new normal in the medium term, and new normal in the long term. Let us look at uh, all three. As it starts now, like it has started now, we are allowed to operate our hotels. In uh, today's webinar, I've been told that uh, we all are hoteliers here. Uh, so, um, uh, you know, like uh, we have started opening, but the, the whole scenario is not the same anymore. Now, what the scenario is, what, you know, we know what the bad things are. We know how people are still uh, in a stage or in a state of panic. It's, uh, you know, it's a fear for their lives. So it is a responsibility, our responsibility to first look at the brighter side ourselves. We must believe in ourselves first and then we need to radiate this confidence among the tourists. What are the brighter sides then? I already said that 10.5 million tourists visited us during the normal time, that is 2019, and we are not going to see them. But we can also look at a piece of statistics that 26 million Indians in 2019 traveled abroad for pleasure, leisure, meeting, uh, losing, but these 26 million Indians are also abroad for their vacation. They're not going to Europe, they're not, not going to the United States, nor are they going to play nearby places like uh, uh, you know, Thailand or Mauritius or Seychelles or this. Now they have to travel within the country. Already, it is, uh, you know, the, the way we have been confined within our homes, it has not uh, just been a physical confinement, it's been a mental confinement also. Like, uh, you know, we are, uh, we have all sort of been inside pressure cookers. If I consider my own family, uh, you know, I, my wife, my son, uh, you know, I still have been going out uh, for, to the shops, to the markets, for some work also. But my wife and my son, they have been confined inside, the, um, inside our house for uh, so many months. And they are also in a pressure cooker-like situation. They also want to go out. My wife has been telling me, can't we go out, go somewhere? Because we used to travel every year at least twice. But I have told her, yes, uh, we will uh, probably towards the end of this month or the beginning of September. But where will we go? We will not definitely go to, uh, say, Kerala or Goa, Rajasthan, uh, Gujarat, any such places. Because it will involve um, quite a lot of traveling and uh, coming in contact with more and more people. We will be looking for destinations which are nearby, where uh, I'll have to, my traveling will be leased, probably by car. You know, I'm talking about the first phase of this new normal. Uh, so probably, uh, you know, motorable uh, dis uh, distances where I can take my own car or maybe hire a car and go with my own family, the three of us. Maybe another friend with his family in another car. That is how um, you know, tourism activity is starting. It has already started. I know people who have already started going out. So it's not that people are not moving. Some, uh, for work, they have already started moving. Like for example, I am associated with an institute in Siliguri where I'm the director, but I give them, uh, you know, I'm in Siliguri uh, two weeks uh, every month. So last, mo last month I traveled to 
Siliguri and went back to Calcutta. This month, again, I have come to Siliguri and at this moment, I'm in Siliguri towards the end of the month, I'll be going back to Calcutta. So for work, we have already started traveling for pleasure, for you know, short vacations, vacations. Uh, it has already started, again, slow, but I'm telling you, like, for example, I have been talking to my family, I, I need to take them out uh, for their mental health. Because for the physical health, we can't compromise the mental health of people. So that same feeling, similar feeling is there among thousands and thousands of people everywhere in the world. We have seen it happening also. So here also it is going to happen. Only thing is that we have to look at how do we prepare ourselves for this. For example, now say I have a, I have a hotel, say, say in, uh, in uh, Darjeeling, or say I have a hotel in Gangtok. Now, tourists have not been coming, but I know to, not today, but tomorrow or day after, they will start coming. One thing I must be busy now in doing is strategizing our business. What are the strategies that are going to be in business and how we are going to implement them? As I said, if you look at the short term normal, there um, we have to look at people who are, who, who, who are uh, you know, residents of nearby towns, nearby cities, nearby, from where people would like to travel. They might not yet come from Calcutta. They might not yet uh, come from, uh, say, say uh, Gujarat. But people from Shiliguri or people from the plains, uh, people from Jalpaiguri, people from Kuchbihar, these people might, will start traveling and they will have to go to places. Because as I earlier said, that uh, uh, the mental part of it is now getting at people. I've been talking to several people, not necessarily from the tourism industry. They were asking me, when can we travel? Can you tell us something? So I told them now, there is no restriction on traveling. Whatever public transport the government is providing, those are there. But at least take out a car if necessary, hire a car and go somewhere nearby, spend two days and come back. The whole atmosphere inside the family, the whole mood inside the family would definitely change. I've been telling people that, people, uh, those who I know and those who I've been discussing with. So this is going to start. We have to strategize. We need to collaborate. We need to collaborate with tour operators, with travel agents. We need to give these people the confidence that you see, I run a hotel where if the tourists come, 100% protection will be there for their health against this godforsaken virus. That means we need to put uh, you, know, uh, you know, measures at the right places where the tourists' lives will be protected. Here, I have something to add. We have all been talking about protecting the health of the tourists. So we must put these measures in our hotels. But I look at it this way. It is for our health also, our safety also. All the things that we are implementing in the hotels is not only for the tourists. We are also uh, equally valuable human beings, even the security guard uh, at the hotel. We also need to remain safe, remain healthy, remain alive. So never ever should we think that all these measures are only for the tourists. We must be very serious while implementing these measures because they ensure our lives also. So it's us as well as the tourists who are protected if we implement these measures. So we have to implement these measures and uh, we have to look at what we need to do. As I said, uh, in, the, in the business planning part, please collaborate with all tour operators, all travel agents, transporters, and uh, you know you you have an association which can help you, and 
uh, we must, you know, if possible, make short videos or presentations, which we must disseminate uh, with, uh, to as many people as possible in terms of what sort of protections we are taking. Because one thing we must remember, in the new normal, not only in the short term, middle term, or long term, in the new normal, this concern for health and safety is going to be the number one priority for all travelers for a very long time to come. It is, uh, you know, earlier it used to be comfort, luxury, ease of traveling, uh, the, you know, what, are the, what facilities uh, there are, all this, all this would remain. But now this new factor would come and climb right onto the top of the list. And that is concern for health, safety and security from this coronavirus, against this coronavirus. So let us see, uh, let us quickly go through the different, uh, you know, uh, measures, different, uh, you know, SOPs that we should uh, implement in our hotels, be it a five-star hotel, be it the small, small one-star hotel everywhere we need to make sure that the tourist has the confidence about checking uh, in my hotel. So uh, we uh, Mr. Mr. Prabhakar Papa, if you could kindly mute your microphone because some sort of a voice and other noise is coming. Uh, thank you. Um, now the what sort of measures Again, as a proactive step, our India Tourism Department, they have already uh, you know, uploaded all the SOPs for uh, hoteliers, for tour operators, for restaurateurs, for um, transporters. Everything is there on their website as well as their Facebook page. So we need to go through the SOPs again and again and see how we implement them. Now, there is a Sanskrit shlok, a Sanskrit uh, you know, phrase which says, Adhikantu na doshaya, which means there is no harm in doing something extra, something more. So these SOPs are the minimal standards uh, that have been given by the department. Whereas I recommend that depending on your location, please uh, uh, implement any uh, extra step that is necessary because we need to get business and the only, uh, you know, the only way of getting business now is if we can give this confidence to the tourists that please, please come. It is no less safe, safe than, than your own home. That sort of confidence we need to provide to our tourists, to our guests. So what are the general measures? I, we will uh, touch upon them quickly uh, so that we have ample time left for uh, taking questions also. Um, you see, the, the premises, let's talk about generally about the premises, uh, the general measures that uh, we should take. One is, of course, temperature check. That we can see even in a small shop also, a shop where we need to enter, that they have these uh, temperature check measures. Even I've been talking to the, even the transporters that uh, I have advised that even the driver should uh, have, uh, you know, should be equipped with a temperature gun so that before the tourists board the car, uh, their temperature can be checked. That's the minimum, the first, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, you know the, the, the measure with which we can see whether a person has some symptoms or not. So hand sanitizer, masks, gloves, these should be available in abundance for all staff members at all points, right from the entry point. If you have a time office or, uh, you know, staff entry gate, whatever, there, whatever we do for the tourists should be done for the staff members also because uh, if we neglect that part it is highly possible that one of the staff members who's infected 
and not detected and not given enough, uh, uh, you know, facility uh, for, uh, for hygiene, maintenance of hygiene can always infect others, including the tourists. So the tourists, if we tell the tourists that, sir, ma'am, these measures are not only for you, our staff are also undergoing rigorous health check and, uh, uh, you know, uh, all these measures that you are being required to follow. So we ourselves need to display that also to the guests. We need to display our, uh, uh, you know, how health conscious we staff members are. So, for example, all garbage bags need to be changed everywhere. They should be only biohazards bag, which are now easily available everywhere, not very expensive either. So we need to once uh, we need to you know seal that and dispose of it. Then disinfectants. We need to check out. There are different disinfectants available, and uh, even I, I I remember in the SOPs given uh, in the uh, in the India Tourism website there even the how to make the dis disinfectant in, in what percentage solution, even that is given what we should acquire. Um, I know uh, some hotels, they are making their own disinfectants, uh, you know, because in large quantities, uh, it would prove to be much cheaper. Uh, of course, they are following all the, uh, uh, you know, uh, everything, how it should be the scientific advices and they're making their own disinfectants, even their own sanitizers. There are a number of hotels which have started doing it and uh, uh, you know, it proves to be much cheaper. So that part, and we need to fill up all the areas, visible areas with posters, standees, uh, uh, you know, uh, everywhere, banners, writing about the measures that are being taken and the do's and don'ts. In the guest areas, the do's and don'ts for the guests. In the staff areas, the do's and don'ts of the staff. So that is very important. Uh, like, for example, if possible, in the reception area, install a hand washing facility. Because, uh, you see, sanitizers are fine, but the best is washing with soap. We all know by now, we all have been going through the same problem that we know that washing our hands for 20 seconds, it uh, removes the possibility of any virus uh, deposit on our hands because hands are the parts of the body with which we touch most of the objects and they need to be kept uninfected. So hand washing facility, of course, inside the room, it would be there, but in the public area also. Even sanitizers, uh, I recommend that uh, Please use uh, foot-operated dispensers, which are again, uh, you know, very reasonably priced. Initially, when they came to the market, they were a bit expensive, but now they are available. Number of companies are making them. They are easily available and, uh, uh, you know, not uh, not very hard on the pocket. So, and of course, isolation facility has to be there in every hotel. We cannot sell to our full capacity now, not that we are getting full capa capacity crowd at this moment. Uh, so these uh, need, to be, uh, need to be done regularly and staff need to present themselves, you know, in the most hygienic manner. Like we all, are, we all know masks, masks are there, but we need to understand that as, uh, as workers, as staff, who come in contact with so many people throughout the day, not only the colleagues, but uh, you know, uh, the tourists who are coming from outside. We need to uh, take maximum measures for that. Like, I recommend a face shield. Because you see, uh, there are three points to which the virus can enter our body. One is, of course, the mouth, the nose, and the eyes. We all are covering our mouth and the nose most of the time forgetting the eyes. The eyes are also vulnerable. So those of us who wear spectacles, we already have a natural protection. But those who don't, it's better to use a face shield over and above the mask. Even the hair, if we are in the public area for a long time, it, it's better to use a disposable head cover. 
And uh, you know, th this sort of Aradya Setu app, this is mandatory for all staff, for all tourists who tell, they should have this app downloaded along with location and uh, their net service on. Um, we need also to train our staff for respiratory etiquette because we are in public areas, we are dealing with people. We all know that we must cover our nose and mouth while sneezing or coughing. And we can't do it just like that. We need to cover how staff need to be trained in that, not on the palm, but on the crook of the elbow. We have to raise our arm, bring it completely on, uh, you know, covering the whole face. And in the crook of the elbow, our nose and mouth should be there when we do that. Else, uh, tissue paper in the pocket all the time for sneezing and coughing. So these are, uh, you know, and uh, of course, we must restrict movement as much as possible, movement of staff as well as of the guests. Even the guests need to be advised in their do's and don'ts that they should not be coming out of their uh, rooms without any purpose. Yes, they will go for sightseeing. They will go for outdoor activities. When they go, they should come out, but not just for loitering uh, in the lobby or somewhere. Um, guests should be, again, uh, insisted upon that they must wear a mask. If by chance we get a guest who doesn't have a mask or dropped it somewhere on the way, we must have additional supply in the hotel to provide the guest with a mask. Some hotels, let me tell you, have already decided to create a small, um, uh, you know, health kit, hygiene kit with a, with a small bottle of sanitizer, a mask and such other, you know, small items or a bottle of sanitizer or even nowadays we get sanitizers in sashes, you know, like we get shampoo sashes, we get sanitizer sashes and uh, uh, they can be used, uh, you know, given to the guests. But everything have need to be disposed of in biohazard garbage bags. For that, uh, very clear instruction, we do them those in posters, on standees, everywhere. If, uh, if, uh, you know, if possible, uh, such do's and don't uh, notice in each room of the hotel, advisable. <coughs> All check-ins need to be contactless. There should not be any exchange of paper. Paper is one surface where uh, you know, the virus gets deposited and survives for a few hours. So no money, no other forms, etc. Everything should be online, including payment, booking to payments. Everything has to be only online with a distance maintained between the staff and the guests. Um, uh, you know, uh, and we must take the travel history uh, and uh, you know, the, their uh, medical condition, history, everything when a tourist travels. Um, their full itinerary, it has to be pre-declared and uh, um, where they will be going, how much time uh, they will be spending there, everything. For food service, again, um, you know, always with gloves, of course, we must uh, take uh, adequate precaution even in the kitchen. For example, if I'm a guest tomorrow in a hotel, uh, I might tell the manager in the restaurant or the supervisor in the restaurant that I'm pretty impressed by the, the, you know, the way you are maintaining your restaurant during this time. But uh, Can I just have a peep in, uh, inside your kitchen? Can I just have a look in? If the supervisor you know, stops me, I would immediately lose confidence in the hotel. The supervisor should be confident enough to tell me right now, sir, please come with me. And that means in the kitchen also, we should uh, uh, you know, install adequate measures uh, uh, to ensure that no staff are standing together. Everybody is wearing personal protections, you know, like mask, head cover, etc. And maintaining a distance. We can reduce the menu. The menu doesn't have to be the same one during the normal time. It's a new normal menu. We can either reduce items or create a menu, a shorter menu. We can create only table goats, 
or even carte de jus, uh, you know, short pre-planned fixed uh, menus with a fixed price. So that also we can do. Buffets are, of course, a big no-no till this point of time. In the short, uh, short term, new normal, there are, no, there are not going to be any buffets. So uh, that we have to uh, maintain and if possible, as long as possible, um, use disposable uh, crockery, cutlery, glassware. They're beautiful ones available now, uh, very aesthetically designed. Uh, try and acquire those. I know I'm talking all about costs, but we'll come to that in the end. Uh, how do we cover these? Um, we have to reduce even the number of covers because from the same family, if there are four or five people, we can see them at the same table. But if there's another group of tourists who, are all, who also want to dine at the same time, we need to distance them. As it is, we are running, we are supposed to run at a 50% occupancy at the most at this moment. The government of India is advised to remember uh, every alternate room to be occupied. So uh, as it is, we will have fewer guests in a hotel at any given point of time. And if it is possible, after consulting with the guests, um, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, separate out their uh, timings for their meals. Of course, checking out for their convenience, so that there is no crowding inside the restaurant. All this we need to do. Every possible step would not be written in the SOP, but we need to think what more can we do uh, to, uh, you know, to make the guests feel safer. If there are two families staying separately, separate families not known to each other. I would like to talk as a manager of the hotel. I'll talk to both of them and fix up their dinner timings so that uh, you know, I will tell them, sir, I'm talking about this because we want only you to be there inside the restaurant so that your, again, your uh, health is protected. We are doing the, the, you know, the maximum that, uh, that we can do. This is just one of the measures. So these all we, uh, we need to do etc and uh, room service yes we will provide room service of course but preferably the waiter not entering the room you know as long as possible again uh, we should use a trolley if we have only staircases we can't use a trolley have a small trolley on every floor if that is also not possible at least uh, you know small uh, stools on which we can deposit the food tray. The food tray should be left outside the room, not the guest told, sir, your food is uh, here. Kindly take it. The guest opens the door and he himself takes the tray in. And the guest needs to be told, sir, kindly uh, return the tray outside and let uh, the room service know. So, these are the measures and you know then we are not coming in uh, any contact at all the same uh, you know goes for uh, housekeeping the same goes for housekeeping again uh, the guests can opt out of uh, the daily cleaning we, we need to ask sir do you want one of the staff members to go inside your room and clean the room every day or only when you want us to this is all, sir, about uh, uh, you know, not coming in contact with others as much as possible. Explain the reason. And then ask. If the guest says, no, okay, I don't need any cleaning, then don't send any staff. If the staff needs to go inside for cleaning or, say, for any maintenance operation. So there, uh, what we need to do is... Uh, what, we, what we need to do is... Uh, uh, you know, the guests need to come out of the room. They need to either sit in the lobby if the lobby is big or stand on the corridor and the staff go in and do their job, come out. The guests in turn uh, go in after that. So these are the protocol that we uh, need to put in place and observe also. Even the change of the ask the guests. Put a uh, uh, you know, uh, sort of a, uh, uh, a tent card on the side table stating that, uh, sir, uh, please uh, place this card on your 
on your bed if you need to, uh, the linen to be changed. Otherwise, uh, help us in conserving water. You know, something like that, a nice uh, message written. I remember um, even 15 years back, uh, you know, I saw this sort of messages even in Indian hotels. Um, I was uh, in one of the Kamath hotels in Bombay. And, uh, you know, when I came back in the evening, because I had kept that card on the bed, asking, uh, not kept the card on the bed, asking them not to change the linen. And I got, uh, you know, one small lozenge along with a note from the executive housekeeper thanking me uh, for using the same linen. So these sort of small measures, not just, you know, the harsh measures, we can mix our softness along with them uh, and then, uh, you know, make the guests stay uh, much more pleasurable. So uh, another point, of course, this and uh, uh, the guests see all the time, uh, you know, it is again confidence boosting. It is good for what we are doing. Also, it boosts the confidence of the guests that disinfecting activity is going on continuously. Continuous disinfecting activity, like, for example, right from when the guests uh, alight from their cars, uh, they, of course, are checked for their temperature, hand sanitizer, etc. All these are there. But what about their luggage? We tell them, sir, please go to your room and we will uh, send the luggage to you after disinfecting them. This is confidence booster. I like it as a tourist. Okay, my luggage would be disinfected because my luggage along with me has also traveled. So that's going to get disinfected. Then I see that every touch point, you know, door handles, railings, all the chairs, chair handles, then uh, the tabletops or the railings, all these are being continuously disinfected. The stairs, the, like for example, say me with my family now, uh, you know, check-in has been done. We are going to our room. We enter the lift. Before that, one of the staff members tells us, just a moment, sir, and sprays a disinfectant on all the buttons and then tells me, please, sir. So small measure. But again, a huge confidence booster for me. And the person who is taking us, the bellboy, uh, takes us to the room, disinfects the door handle first before opening the door. Sir, I, I shall not enter with you. Kindly go in. Everything is uh, there. The TV has a uh, you know, connection. If you have any problems with any of the gadgets, please call a reception. We will be uh, you know, most eager to help you over the phone if possible, and if necessary, I shall come. So that sort of measures. All these are confidence-boosting uh, measures, and uh, um, all, all, all garbage, everything, the guests, uh, if necessary, we can write in our posters that we are disposing of all garbage in only in biohazard bags. And telling the guests that anything that you need to dispose of, please dispose of in the garbage bag, uh, you know, that has been provided inside your room. So such measures in each and every department. But again, uh, I'm reiterating that, uh, uh, you know, it is not only about showing the guests that we are doing it. It's also equally important for our own lives. So this is how it is going to start in the new normal, the short term new normal. Now, as I said in the beginning, there is going to be a mid middle term new normal. In the middle term, we'll find travel restrictions uh, you know, being lifted much more. That means more tourists will start coming in. And then we need to again replan our strategies like in the sense how do we, with more guests coming in now, how do we maintain the same standards of hygiene and we will have to, because a lot of people in the middle normal, as I said, uh, will be traveling for the first time and they will be equally, uh, you know, they will have nurtured the fear in their minds that I've taken the decision, I've come out, but will I be safe? So that question would always remain in their mind. And it is us who are going to address those questions. It is us 
who are going to take measures uh, to uh, satisfy the guest's uh, query and allay the fears in his mind that our hotel is 100% uh, safe. In the long term normal, new normal, um, which is what we all are actually waiting for, and which I see sometime in the early parts of 2021 happening, that we go back to the normal of 2019. You know, in terms of people's movement, in terms of several tourism activities, um, and, uh, um, you know, um, all, all sorts of like 2019 normal time. But still, we will not be able to call it the same normal. We'll continue to call it the new normal, new, because again, we will be doing exactly the things that we used to do in 2019. But in addition to that, these health and safety measures would continue. They are going to be there. Um, for many years to come, this is going to be there because as I always say, now we have COVID-19. What about a COVID-20 or a COVID-21? Today I was reading somewhere that uh, in, uh, I think in Malaysia, they have come across a new strain, Malaysia or Philippines, one of these two countries. They have come across a new strain of coronavirus, which mutates much faster and infects faster also. So they are now uh, you know, studying that uh, virus. But whatever it is, this is going to be there even when after the foreign tourists start coming to us. I shall uh, like to mention one point in the end, a very contentious point. For the foreign tourists, the government of India has uh, provided us with a form, a self-declaration health form, which they are supposed to fill up and submit before they travel. That is including a COVID test done, where they need to have a negative result. The website says, the government says it is mandatory for all inbound tourists, people uh, coming from other countries. But it also mentions it is recommended for domestic tourists also. If it is recommended for domestic tourists, we in our associations, we need to discuss, we need to talk, and we need to formulate a common strategy my recommendation is, I've been talking to the tourism people also, even with uh, Mr. Sagnik Chaudhary and Mr. Sayak Nandi, that we need to implement this form even for the domestic tourists. You know, like, if I'm a tourist, one hotel tells me that, sir, no, 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 you don't need, uh, you know, one hotel tells me, you have to undergo this test and send us your results before you come. Another hotel tells me, no, sir, that is too much. You don't need to. Where do you think I will have my confidence as a tourist, as a traveler? I will, though it's a bit of a hassle for me to get this test done, not as much of a hassle it used to be a month back. Now, test facilities are there even up to the, even in the tier three towns. They're available in, at more than one centers and we can get a very uh, quick result. A 24-hour result is now possible. Earlier, it was all taking time. That those were the initial days. But now we can get a COVID test done easily. It is still a bit of a hassle. But I, I uh, would like to, uh, you know, go to a hotel where they insist upon this, uh, insist on it, uh, because that means it shows me that hotel is much more health safety concern than the other hotel, which doesn't want me to do it. Doesn't. Uh, doesn't tell me that it is mandatory. So we need to take it up at the association level, discuss it, formulate a strategy. Uh, if I'm asked personally, I would recommend that this should be made mandatory by us, if not by the government, by us for all domestic tourists traveling in the short term new normal. I'm not talking about the middle or the long term. In the short term uh, new normal, like what we have started now, this should be made mandatory for the domestic tourists. That is all uh, I had to add. 
And uh, Mr. Bolsa, uh, I think, uh, you know, I uh, tried and covered as much as possible from the SOPs of the hotels, but within the given time, it's not possible to discuss the measure in detail. Uh, I've tried to do justice to the best of my ability. Uh, I hope some benefit is there uh, from this uh, discussion. And uh, we can take questions if there are. Thank you, Dr. Chatterjee. That was uh, very informative. I hope uh, the participants enjoyed it. We have a few questions. So I'll take the questions now. We have uh, Mr. Kostov Roy from Dreamland Group. He is asking about the implementation of swimming pools. How do we open up the swimming pool? You know, do we have to chlorinate them and uh, you know disinfect in the pools? What would be the best way? How do we start the swimming pools working? At this moment, we should not start. Very simple. In the okay. in the short term, new normal, we should not start. However much we disinfect, it's something like let's yeah. imagine uh, why the water. Let's imagine a door handle. Yeah. I have disinfected it for the tourists. Now, two tourists come, they touch it, they enter. What happens to the third tourist? Should I not disinfect it again before he touches? So if these are the measures we are taking for a simple thing like a door handle, the same goes uh, you know, to, uh, true for the swimming pool. It is much more dangerous because it is much more uh, you know, time taking and tedious to disinfect and coordinate the whole pool. We can't do it after every family takes a swim and goes back and then we disinfect the whole pool again. That's not possible now. It is not advisable to use a swimming pool at this moment. Mr. Shobi Abraham from Bhopal, he has a question that when can long distance travel be possible in India? When can people from South India come to Northeast? As, as soon as possible, as early as possible. Uh, as, you know, we all are praying for it, those who believe in God. Uh, like, um, you know, special trains are now running. Like I said, uh, last month, this month, I have been traveling to Siliguri. Um, a long distance train journey might not be the order of the day right now for me, because again, uh, uh, because of the time that we spent. But uh, flights have also started operating. Slowly, the flights have started operating. And once we go to the middle normal, which I was talking about, after the first now one or two months, when we go to the middle normal, say end of October, November uh, or December, around this time, uh, I'm sure the middle normal will settle in. That will be the time when uh, you know, we domestic tourists, we will be going long distance also. Now we are going only to the motorable distance. Now we will be taking flights or train to go to a little more distant places. So. Uh, we shall, of course, from, uh, uh, he's from Bhopal, no, as you said. Yes, he's from Bhopal. So, from Bhopal, you should come to the Northeast and enjoy the beauty of Northeast. I have enjoyed the beauty of Bhopal, of course. Uh, I have uh, enjoyed the, uh, you know, the, the hospitality of Bhopal. I know how rich it is, and but in turn, you should also be able to, and let's all play as soon as possible. Mr. Kostava, in fact, has another interesting question. He asks if the kitchen is a non-air conditioned kitchen, how do we ensure hygiene? How do we ensure the manpower they are wearing the personal protection kit? It's very difficult. So is there a way out? You see, number one, it is good that it is not air conditioned. Because air conditioning is more dangerous. You know, open air is better. We, it is not uh, air conditioned, but I'm sure that the kitchen is, uh, it does have a hot air ventilation system, as well as a fresh air inlet system. They should be working at their optimum. If there are windows uh, or skylights, uh, they should be opened up. They should be kept all the time open. We can use a net uh, to prevent uh, you know, insects from coming in, but they should all be kept open as much as possible. And here again, personal protection kit means all of them should be wearing masks all the time. Disinfectants and uh, hand washing facility inside the kitchen has to be created. There has to be, uh, you know, if you have four sinks, please mark one sink dedicated only for hand washing. 
and let uh, organize some sort of uh, you know foot operated uh, soap dispenser liquid soap dispenser so that people can wash their hands and you know from time to time after preparing dishes touching some other surface every time these are the measures only we should not talk about we should actually stand there and the management should take a very strong stand on this they must actually implement this it is again and again saying it for the safety of us our own safety also mr mrigankar ghosh has a question they have what uh, marketing strategies we must implement to you know attract more tourists to get the rooms filled up so there are there are two things one to identify who are going to come to my hotel in the first you know in the initial new normal the the short term one you know we can do one way like we can look at the you say the districts the green the current green zone orange zone and red zones so the green zone people are free the orange zones are going to be free uh, sooner than later and red zones not now so we can uh, prepare strategies for them how to how to reach out to these uh, people uh, you know where to reach out which are the tour operators travel agencies and talking to them and as i said to come to some sort of arrangements with them uh, where we can send some videos and uh, you know maybe photographs in about the, all the measures that we have taken this is absolutely necessary which is why i said even if we don't have a single guest in the hotel now we should be very busy in in implementing these measures actually installing them photographing them videographing them creating short video clips and you know sending them circulating them as much as possible so we we need to do that so these are the people slowly they are going to come to us as i said in the middle normal probably people from other states will also start traveling then we need to target them so this is how we need to strategize uh, you know how to get the uh, guests mr prabhakar thapa asks a question which i think all hoteliers are grappling with how do we maintain the cost you know the, all these measures will require a lot of money every touch point if we have to disinfect so how do we manage our cost um you see um there are three four things let us uh, take a small uh, uh, you know small sum i am now selling a product for 100 rupees let's say and my cost is 70 rupees so i make a net profit of 30 rupees now suddenly the cost has gone up the cost has gone up to 90 rupees so how do i manage with 10 rupees so what i tell the guests that sir you were paying 100 rupees earlier now it is 110 i am incurring a huge cost for all these measures i am increasing it only by 10% that means it becomes 10 the guest loses extra 10 rupees means he spends extra 10 rupees what do i lose i uh, i am not making a profit of 30 rupees anymore i am making a profit of 20 rupees that means i am also losing 10 rupees so it is a sort of a you know whatever we call it win win or lose lose situation uh, so uh, but somehow we have to manage we have to balance we uh, we must understand that at this point we cannot make profits as we used to make in 2019 during the normal time normal profit and the new normal profit is not going to be the same in the short new normal and in the middle new normal in the long term new normal of course uh, the profits are going to come back to that 700 equation we have uh, more questions coming in i think we can take two or three more mr abhinav abhimanyu agarwal has a question which is a lot of uh, leaders lot of hotels are on lease here and in this treacherous time how do lease holders survive that is his question um see this is not only about the hotels there are i know many restaurants even many shop owners who are on rented so they have taken a hit whatever i have gathered that most of the landlords 
or the most of the actual owners, they have made concessions. Because if they don't make concessions, it is almost impossible to continue to pay with the lease. Uh, uh, Mr. Thakur, if you could kindly mute your microphone. Uh, so it is something like, uh, you see, it could be a straight away cut in the lease amount or it could be a deferred payment. Maybe now the payments for say these five months or whatever, I pay after one year in five installments again, when I, my business picks up. I know the, the, the loss is suffered by the businessman, by the, the person who is doing business. I have a property, I have to pay my taxes. I have given it out on lease. And why should I not get my money? That is generally the way, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the, the property holder, the property owner would like to think. But most property owners, they have also made concession. I know number of, you know, flat owners who have given their flat on rent and uh, people have lost their job. Uh, they have uh, also compromised. Most of us, uh, such a, uh, you know, human, uh, you know, quality which all have come up at this point of time, which is very heartening. I've been reading reports. Uh, I, I don't read, uh, I don't watch TVs much and uh, uh, I don't go into too much of details in the newspapers either because uh, they sell negative news mostly because uh, negative news sells better. For their TRP, they need to do that. But uh, I depend on personal uh, inputs, personal feedback. I know hundreds, more than a hundred cases where some sort of a compromise has been reached. Uh, Mr. Sadhanan Sanawal has a question. He is from uh, Pune. He asks, how do we install, instill confidence in the guests, you know, when they are coming to hotels, that uh, they'll be safe? I think this is what I have been discussing throughout, that uh, it is not only about the health, it is about the mental health also, mental health in the sense, this confidence is something mental, it, is, it can't be seen. So whatever we do is all about confidence. It is about for the practical purpose behind doing it, that is health, safety, hygiene, and the other is confidence. Because with you know, the confidence, if we ourselves have the confidence, the tone that it will take, if we ourselves are confident about each and every Area in the premises being uh, hygienically, uh, you know, uh, healed. So the more confidently we shall be able to talk and send uh, communication to the guests, and those will be more confident uh, words, confident language. So that is the only way by telling them, as I said, one, uh, you know, uh, line should be: our hotel is as safe as your home. So whatever we need to do to say that with confidence, we need to do that. Thank you, Dr. Chatterjee. I think that uh, uh, covers, you know, more or less uh, whatever we wanted to cover. I would request Mr. Sandipan Ghosh to have the closing words. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Botra. And uh, as usual, uh, Dr. Chatterjee has enlightened us with another wonderful session. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, you have been really informative and we keep coming back to you, uh, you know, with, for more information and with the lot of uh, experience that you, uh, you have, I'm sure you're going to enlighten us with much more in the future. Uh, before we leave, uh, we have another session. I think most of the questions have been covered. Uh, I would uh, like to inform all of you that we'll be sharing a Google form with all of you. Uh, through email, uh, the email on which you have registered. We'll share the form. Please uh, fill up the form because that will facilitate us to you know, issue the certificates that India Tourism is going to issue. So please do uh, fill up the form. We'll send you the form by tomorrow and uh, we look forward to an another engaging session for the next week. Thank you, Dr. Chatterjee. Thank you so much. Uh, I, will, I will like to thank all of you again and my best wishes remain for all the participants here because I have spent so much, such a long time in this industry. Uh, I actually feel for them from my heart and consider them family. So my best wishes, all prayers remain with everybody here. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much.
Thank you. Thank you so much. And, uh, we are closing your session to, to for today. Thank you all for participating. We have had a very engaging session and we look forward to another session next Monday. Thank you so much and God bless you all. Thank you. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.